Hello everybody, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we are talking about a very quick and dirty but incredibly powerful sprite generation tool. It's got perhaps the most simple and bare bones interface I have ever seen. Uh, it could definitely use a facelift in that department, but it is a capable tool, what is called character generator, and basically it's sort of the equivalent of a 3D base mesh generator, something like Poser but for 2D sprites. What it allows you to do is take a base character and then start building on it. You start adding features on top of it, almost like cutting out paper dolls. And it generates the, the resulting character in a number of different angles and perspectives and animations. So you can see here at the top, we've got some preview animations going on. And as you saw there, this is a website. I will, of course, link to all the links down below. But you can see a couple of different previews of the animation. So if you're making a slashing animation or a shooting animation, and then down here, you see all the various different um, perspectives that it gives you. So you've got uh, walking, casting, uh, falling, uh, shooting a bow, and so on. Uh, and what you do now is basically customize using this huge number of sprite sheets that they're getting from, from something called the Liberated Pixel Cup. We'll see that in a second. And this basically puts them all together to create a character for you. So you see over here, pretty straightforward. When you're done with your results, you save it out as a PNG file, and you get uh, basically an exported sprite sheet as a result. And it's pretty straightforward. You start at the top here and you pick your sex. So you got male or female. It's going to change the base mesh as a result. And as you go, you can add some wounds to your character. So if you've got wounded ribs or you're making zombies, for example, you could pick that right there. And you will see the character has now wounded limbs, wounded arms, or we can leave that completely alone. Then we go in, we can define some uh, eyes to the character and that will change out the character's sprites. It's hard to tell from this magnification, but it did. Uh, facial details, so we could go ahead, we could add a mustache or mask or some glasses. Let's add some glasses onto our sprite there. Define the nose, we could have a big nose. And then you just kind of keep going. So you define the various different pieces that go together. So we've got a pair of black shoes for this guy. Uh, we'll get some legs on this guy. We'll have it in uh, a male robe. We'll make this guy a bit of a wizard. Uh, so boots, we don't really need that because we already got shoes, but and this is kind of one of those interesting things. There's some female only options there and they will show up regardless to what you picked at the top, but you can only select them if you pick the female base. So we've got some clothing going on. So now let's add in a, mm, nah, nothing from there actually. Some mail, let's give them some chain mail. All right, so we got robes and some chain mail. You see the generated sprite that's coming up as a result. We can go ahead and add some armor on it. So you see if you are working with, um, uh, making an RPG style game, a sprite style game, you could create a ton of different results almost immediately. And, and then you're seeing the results as they go out there. And it's using all of these various different base meshes on the one end to generate all this. Once again, we will get into that in a second. And it just keeps going. It goes into a huge amount of detail. So we want to add some bracers to our character. that are available right there. A belt, buckles, necklace, cape. So let's give this guy a cape. So we'll give him a solid male cape of red. And there you see, we now have a red cape on our character and it affects all of the frames of animation throughout. Uh, we could add a quiver, we could add some hair so we don't have to be bald anymore. So let's give this guy a mohawk, uh, a blue mohawk. And there you see, we now have a blue mohawk for our sprite. And we could add a weapon of some kind. So say here we've got, um, let's go oversized thrusting crystal staff. All right, so now, oops, I don't think that worked. All right, there we go. So now our character has a giant crystal staff that we can use. And at this point in time, from all your attack animations now are updated, you can go ahead and save out your results as a PNG file and they are ready to be used in your game. So it's really that simple to actually uh, create a character at this point in time. Then again, up here, you can see the various different uh, things. So here's our slashing animation. It's only got a handful of the animation frames in the actual preview up there because as you can see, you're creating a number more than, than what you would have expected up top. And then one other thing that we've got here is you can actually um, RNG tint it so you can add a color tint to the palette of your character and make some massive changes. So I'm going to do 128 to the, um, the red here and you'll see the palette updates across the entire character to using these palettes and now we've got a massive red tint. Now interestingly enough, I don't know how to actually undo this change out from the palette that's generated, but as you can see, you can add uh, color tints quite simply to your character. It's just once you've initially done that first tint, it seems to keep applying it on top. So I don't know how to get back to the base level tinting, but you can obviously create you know, palette swaps really, really simply using this tool as well. So very straightforward, very um, 
a painful interface at times, uh, but for the most part, a very, very cool tool. Then we can collapse everything down and then we can start back to normal if we so wish. And then once again, when you're done, you can go ahead and save it out this way and you are done. So now a little bit onto the assets that are actually powering that. It comes from something called the Liberated Pixel Cup. It's a two-part competition, make a bunch of awesome free culture licensed artwork, and then program a bunch of free software games using it. So basically it is a large collection of dual licensed CC by SA and GPL V3, uh, styly consistent art assets. And then you actually, it's all hosted over on um, open game art. So if you come here to open game art, LPC style guide index, you can actually see an example of the kind of art that it creates in action. So here you can see, I think it's, is it WASD keys? the kind of artwork that this project exists of. So if you want to get a number of backgrounds and so on, uh, you can get them from the LPG Cup asset. But again, it has a number of base 2D sprites and things like cloaks and weapons and so on. And this tool basically just puts them all together and uses it to create a sprite generator. And this is ultimately the kind of art style that you are going to get out of it. But the amazing thing is between these two sort resources, um, you can create a heck of a lot of a 2D RPG style or 2D overhead style game very, very easily and quickly. It's, it's definitely a very cool project, so I figured I would share it here. It's one of those quick and dirty things, but I, I love quick and dirty, to be honest. So that is it. Uh, that is the Universal LPC Sprite, Ship, Sprite Sheet Character Creator. Again, it, it's only good for one specific art style, but it is incredibly capable in that one art style. It, it is, uh, with a bit of a UI redo, it's it would be just a remarkable tool. But even as it is, even with its kind of clunky user interface, it is quite capable. And like I said, you can create... Um, characters exceedingly quick. Now it would be kind of cool to see a, a like a randomized button that would kind of go through and select things and then you kind of could tweak from there instead of always starting from naked. Uh, but it, it's, yeah, it, it's definitely worth checking out and I would highly recommend uh, if you're in the 2D sprite market, uh, this is completely free. Uh, do be aware of that dual license setup, but you really shouldn't be hurt by um, the CC BY um, basically normally means that you just have to give credit to the original author. But look into that into a little bit more detail before you decide to use this in your own titles, especially if they're commercial titles. But I don't think there'll be any issue as long as you give credit or if it's GPL v3 and you open up your sources, obviously you're not going to have an issue at all. All right, so that is it. That is, I guess, the um, spreadsheet sheet generator and potentially an introduction to the... Um, liberated pixel cup if you've never seen it before anyways what do you think of this tool have you seen other tools like this that you would recommend are you going to check it out um and uh, yeah that's it talk to you all later goodbye